Welcome to Module 1, Asking an Answerable Clinical Question. This is one of a series of instructional videos created for the Evidence-Based Practice Unit in First Year Medicine. This series of modules has been developed by Tim Ruggles and Karen Neves from the Kellogg Library. They are the liaison librarians for the Faculty of Medicine. Being able to frame an answerable clinical question is the first step in evidence-based practice. For every two to three patients, there will be at least one to two questions arising for which you may not know the answer or latest evidence. Learning how to properly frame a good clinical question will inform your search strategy and help ensure that you find the most relevant evidence for your question in the most efficient way. The best way to frame a question is to use the widely accepted PICO model, where P stands for the population or problem, I stands for intervention, C stands for comparison if there is one, and O stands for the outcome or outcomes of interest. You may also see references to PICO T, where T stands for time. You might want to know the effectiveness of a three-day course of antibiotics compared to a 10-day course, or you may be interested in knowing the five-year survival rate in a prognosis question. Both of these examples incorporate the element of time. Sometimes the acronym PICO D is used where D stands for a particular study design, such as randomized control trials or cohort studies that would best answer the question you are asking. Let's work through an example using this PICO matrix. To identify your population, ask yourself, how would I describe my patient? For example, perimenopausal women. What is the main intervention I am considering? In this case, we are interested in hormone replacement therapy. Our comparison group are those taking non-hormonal therapy. The outcome element of your question should describe what you hope to accomplish, measure, improve, or affect, such as increased or decreased mortality five years later. There are two broad categories of questions, background and foreground questions. Typically, background questions are less specific and usually try to fill gaps in general knowledge of human physiology and disease processes. Clinicians who are responsible for patients with a particular problem will be more likely to ask a foreground question. In this example, we see two questions on a similar topic. The first is a background question, and the second is a foreground question. The first question would best be answered by going to appropriate textbooks. The second question is more likely to lead you to the appropriate trials in the journal literature. Note the second question has more specific terminology which lends itself to the development of a more effective search strategy. Let's construct our PICO from this patient scenario. A 58-year-old woman presents to emergency department with three-day history of worsening low back pain with a history of baseline chronic back pain. The pain doesn't radiate and is located in the inferior thoracic area equal bilaterally. There is no history of trauma or injury. The patient denies fever, neurologic symptoms, and has no history of cancer. She is intolerant to non-steroidal anti-inflammatories due to GI side effects and is unresponsive to Tylenol-1, two tabs every four hours. You wonder if a combination of tramadol and acetaminophen might give her some relief from pain. Here is a well-framed PICO for this scenario. In adult females with chronic low back pain, does tramadol with acetaminophen taken orally twice daily compared with placebo reduce pain scale scores? For more information on how to ask a good question, see this resource. See Module 2 to learn how to develop a viable search strategy from your PICO.